Yeah. My dear friends, so for this week, the experiment title is Freefall. And as you know, this is our fourth experiment. On the lab manual, this is experiment six, but of course we're not following the lab manual. So this is our fourth experiment, Freefall. As the name states, it's a free fall. So the object will be just falling, like this, free. The aim of today's experiment is firstly to analyze and observe the motion of the free falling ball, to determine the relationship between velocity, time, and acceleration due to gravity of a falling ball, and finally to determine if all objects can fall with the same constant acceleration in the absence of air or other resistances. My dear friends, on this aim, there is a point, guys, for the report you are supposed to be submitting for this week, this aim should be word per word, okay? You write it exactly as I'm writing it on the board. If you do not see it clearly, please contact me and I will send it to you. But for this report, I want to see it word by word, this aim that you see on the board. If the aim is not seen in your report, Word by word, I will put a zero for all of them. I hope it's clear for everyone, and I will repeat it one more time. Our aim is to analyze and observe the motion of the free-falling ball. Secondly, to determine the relationship between velocity, time, and acceleration due to gravity of the falling ball. Thirdly, to determine if all objects can fall with the same constant acceleration in the absence of air and other resistance. So please, for this week's report, this should be word by word, okay? Exactly the same. If it's not word by word, I will put zero in your reports for all of the report. Yes, so you will get a zero in your report. Now, let's start by looking at the equation. So as you guys know, the ball will be free falling. This is the metallic ball we will be using. It will be free falling, and I will show you the apparatus later. But the equations, as this ball falls, it has a speed. So the speed of this is going to be y, which is the initial height, minus the y0, it's the height where it will reach, over t, the time it took to reach that point. And also the velocity is the v1, the initial velocity, plus the v0, the final velocity, over 2. So if we put these two together, this will be equal to this one. If we continue, we will have, of course, you multiply the y, the 2 here, the t here, you get 2y minus y0 equal to t v1 plus v0. As you know as well, the acceleration is going to be, of course, the speed over time. So it's going to be v1 minus v0 over t. v1 plus v0, which gives us v1 plus v0 equals to 80. Actually, here it's going to be v1 minus v0. Sorry, v1 minus v0 is equal to 80. So v is going to be v0 plus 80. Then, if we put and combine everything together, we should have the 2y minus y0 is equal to t v0 plus 80 plus v0. Carrying on, finally, if you combine everything together, you will have that y minus y0 is going to be v0 t plus half a t. Of course, how do we get this? We multiply the t here and here and here, blah, 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 blah. We continue carrying on. We multiply and we divide. And as we know, we are thinking that y is going to be equal to zero because we take it as the initial position and the a will be minus the gravity we're taking it from the bottom up yes from the bottom up from the bottom y the first y is going to be zero and because the acceleration is going up this is going to be minus the gravity again why because it is a free fall so if we apply all of this in our equation we have zero minus y zero is equal to zero t plus half minus half g t squared and we reach to the equation you will be using in your report, which is this equation. y0 is equal to half g t squared. This is the only equation. You don't need to write all of this in your report. You just write this equation. You say what is the y0, what is the g, what is the t. So y0 is the height, g is the gravitational force, the t is the time it took for the ball to fall from that height. And v squared, you just square that. Now we move on to the apparatus. If we move on to our apparatus here, 
Our apparatus, as you see, this is the free fall apparatus. This will be our free fall apparatus. We sum, this is basically a stand connected to the board. We just sum it up and say this is our free fall apparatus. This here is our spark counter. Here we have our wax coated paper tape. And here we have our meter stick. And as you can see, if you come closer, you see that in the back of the wax coated tape you have, we have this one. What is this? So basically the operating mechanism of this, when we turn it on, when we turn this one on, it will tell us to put the ball on the top. This here, it means put the ball on the top. So here it has a sensor that takes the ball. And then it takes us, tells us to release the ball. It will release and it will give us the time. This will give us the time here. How it operates, it's when I give it a signal to turn on, it will tell me to put the ball. Here on the top, there is a sensor that sends a signal to this apparatus that the ball is here. And then it tells me to release. When it tells me to release, it's starting the timer. So it releases its timer. When it hits here, there is something in the back that records the hit, which stops the timer here. It gives a signal to the timer to stop. And that is how we record the time. So we do this, firstly we start by doing it on the 60 centimeters, which is a 0 0.6 meters. We do the same thing, we turn this on, it tells us to put the ball, we put the ball, it tells us to release, we release the ball, it will hit on the wax coated paper, stopping the timer and we record the time. We do this for 60 centimeters or 0 0.6 meters, we do it for 80, again the same thing. We turn it on, it tells us to put the ball, we release the ball, it comes here, it stops, it gives us the time. We do that for the 80, then we take it like that, and then we put it for the 100 centimeters, which is zero, which is one, and 90 as well, we continue as seen on the table. So, if we go back to our table, this is where the second thing I require from you guys. All the tables should be the same. So I should be able to see these tables in your report. Again, the same values. 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1, 1 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 for the height in meters. Time in seconds, 0 0.35, 0 0.41, 0 0.67, 0 0.78, 0 0.81, 0 0.94, and 1.2 seconds. This table, I should see it exactly in your report. If I don't see this exact table in your reports, you will get a zero. Alright? So from our table, we know what to find. We have the y0, we have the t square, which is just the square of this one. So we will find the g. So I'm supposed and expected to see in your reports G1, G2, G3, G4, G5, G6, and G7. This is in your calculations part. Yes, I don't want to see it in the table. I don't want to see these in the table. I want to see these in your calculations part. After this, of course, the apparatus I stated before, they're on the board here in case you forget what is the apparatus. After your calculations, we have a graph. What? is the graph about. The graph is y0 versus t squared. And this is where the third thing I require from you. So for, I will repeat. First thing I will require in your report is that you state the aim word per word. If you didn't see it on the video, contact me, I will give you the aim. Number one. Number two, the table should be again the same for everyone. If this is different, you get a zero. And thirdly, the graph. The graph should be drawn on a piece of paper, yes? With your student number and your name on it. If you don't draw the graph on a graph paper or on a paper and attach it to your report, also you get a zero. So these are the three things I require in the report that you will be submitting this week. If you don't Submit like this, you get a zero directly. I will not even look at your report. And this is the video, in case you get a zero, I will send the video again and tell you why did you get a zero. So good luck in this week's report. 
you will have one week and also good luck in your 